Hello and welcome back to the Legend of Zelda Minish Cap playthrough with me, the Jelly Monkey. Last time, we opened the door. Now we're in another room. Ooh. Okay, in all seriousness, we're continuing our trek through Deepwood Shrine. In other words, dungeon crawling. We're facing terrifying enemies of ladybugs. I've got nothing. Please don't go away. I'm sure there'll be stuff in, I can comment on soon. <laughs> but, yeah. The early dungeons tend to be some of the most boring ones, and... Why is that chest out of reach? Is there no way to get across? Oh, darn it. Oh, well, there is that bigger one. What's inside this? Oh. Goody. A compass. Now I can find treasure chests. It's not like the important ones are open in plain sight for anyone to find, and it's not like the ones that are hidden are con that contain pointless items, which honestly are only there for collecting fanatics, but... Oh, and mushrooms can't, they can't be killed. Hooray, this is looking up already. Ooh. What's inside this... behind that door? A giant caterpillar and some webbing. It's best not to ask. Okay. So... I guess I better go back to the other room then. Again, same puzzle. For those of you who didn't watch my last part, you grab it, pull it back, and then... Fall into the water! Okay, maybe I wasn't supposed to pull it back that far. Okay, I'll just follow the track and... Oh! No, you're just being picky! It's freaking pointless as well, since Link doesn't get damaged, but he still freaks out whenever he falls into water. I don't know why. Did no one teach him how to swim, or... Are Hylians weak to water? Are they like gremlins in that sense? Ah, who knows. Anyway. Although I haven't said that, people... Hylians being weak to water probably explain why there's no water-based spell. I mean, you had no use love and did fire, but... Anyway. So yeah, this is another big, you no know, slightly complex expression switch puzzle, but once we take care of slugs, who, yeah, by the way, as you've probably figured out from the um, footage, the um, slugs in the game have a really annoying habit of falling from the ceiling. And they usually tend to do it whilst you're know, walking straight onto them. It's the perfect trap. Except it's a slug that can't really do anything. But I digress. Anyway. The idea is they want you to get trapped, but I think I figured out their puzzle. So we leave it there, but... We don't use this statue to pull down the switch. No, 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 no. We move this statue so that we can get at the door once it's pressed. Huzzah! I'm a genius! Oh my god, the music is tense and we're fighting ladybugs! But they're dangerous, don't you see? They just move around very slowly and out, bounce in awkward directions. Yeah, in case you haven't figured it out, the first dungeon is kind of patronizingly easy. Hope we actually get a proper boss soon. Although then again, I suppose there's a bit much to ask since, you know, I'm tiny right now. I guess all we got up to challenges are bugs. Although it would be quite terrifying if we came across any birds, like in A Bug's Life, if any of you have ever seen that movie. But yeah, we've now got the um, small key now, and after aimlessly wandering around, I remember I'm supposed to go here so that we can fight... A caterpillar! And this is where it picks up, folks. Yeah, the best way to defeat him is to hit his nose and then... Well, smack his tail when it becomes a heart. Yeah, well, I don't get it either. But, you got to do it a number of times, and then he starts to imitate Wriggler and goes all red and angry and such. Actually, it's kind of odd. Why do all caterpillars seem to want to imitate Wriggler these days? Maybe Nintendo just don't have that many ideas. Although, again, they do come up with good new ones every now and again. But anyway. 
We just need to slash him a couple more times, and there we go, he's done. He's really not that hard to beat him. Ooh, sparkly chest, let's see what's inside. A gus jar? Huh. Well, that's a new item. Okay, let's see how it works. Uh, first of all, let's just equip it. Yeah, on this screen you have to um, press start and then assign it to a button like press A or B e when you're above the item to select which button it'll go to. So yeah, like that, we can just use it to suck up the webbing and then spit out whatever we've sucked in. Why wow, that sounded wrong, but... Hey, wait a minute! Where's the webbing come from? I mean, I know we've got bugs in here, but none of those bugs are animal... Uh, sorry, none of those bugs are spiders. Spiders are the only thing, uh, insects, as far as I'm aware, that create webbing. Why is a caterpillar room filled with webbing? Uh, oh, never mind. But yeah, now we have the gust jar, we can kill those uh, freaking mushrooms. It's And we can pick up mysterious shells. Why not? But yeah, basically the gust jar, whenever there's like a weird object that you don't know what the heck it's doing there and you want to get rid of it, use the gust jar to just suck it all up. That way you can reveal the secret switches reveal on the floor. But like I said before, most of them are just stuff like the mysterious shells, which aren't really that important. Plot wise, anyway. And yeah, in case you want some more, there you go. Step. Yay, more shells. But now it's time we stopped wandering around and got back to what we were really supposed to use this thing for. That's right, getting rid of more webbing inside the barrel. Suck it. Yeah. Sorry if you occasionally hear sniffing, by the way. <laughs> uh, my hay fever is acting up again. But never mind that. That never get into the way of a great adventurer. Alrighty. Ah, oh, an idiot pad, I see. We just pull it towards us and. There we go. Elzo! I figured out all of this very easily. Yeah. Basically, you use this knee pad to travel and use the gust jar to propel it in a certain direction. And this is going to take a while, so enjoy sped up footage set to music. Oh, for the love of... Take, I remember this room. Aha! Okay. Now if we just move the lead pad over and... Yes! Small key! Now, if we just go back the way we came... Let's just use a fade for this. And there we go. So yeah, open the locked door and we enter... A brand new room. And again, we use the mushroom gimmick. I might as well talk about the other lily pad gimmick, but put simply, I like the idea, but it's actually very tedious to do, and those mushrooms are really damn picky. I mean, seriously, I don't change my position very much, and look, I survived that time. Huzzah. There better be a bloody heart in these. I feel ripped off now. Okay, so... Yeah... The one trick for this room is, as you probably figured out, the uh, mushrooms aren't in close vicinity, so you have to use Link's jar to pull them closer to you. Wait for it. And slowly pull it towards... Whee! And we've got a giant key. Yeah, this means we can now finally face the boss of this dungeon and get it over with. But first I will save, because Mother always told me to be wary of strange red portals that appear in the middle of the floor. And yeah, this takes us back to the entrance, but thankfully there are two doors that lead to the boss's chambers. But first we take the blue portal... ...to get this! 
Yeah, basically the blue portal opens up every time. I think it's when you beat a mini boss, but I'll have to double check. And that kind of serves as the halfway point. So, yeah, you can use the blue portal to get back to the... To basically just get to the midpoint of a dungeon and not worry about having to try and find your way back to the very beginning. Which is good in some of the later dungeons. So, yeah. Left book door, it contains rupees and nothing else. Or is it rupees? Either way... You get money, and now you move on to this door, which will lead you to the actual boss room. Well, kind of. It leads you to one more puzzle, but it's really easy to figure out. Okay. Gus jar. Do, 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 do. Oh. Yeah, this, dungeons like this only get interesting when, you know, the puzzles aren't so easy to figure out. But anyway... I to open the big door and... <laughs> a choo-choo? Please. I've killed many of your kind before and... Wait a minute. It's much larger than the temple. Wait a second. I'm inside that temple. Oh, this doesn't look good. Okay, so we're now fighting a giant choo-choo, and now my sword is tiny and inadequate, so time to use the traditional Zelda tactic, get the item you just obtained. Yeah, pretty much the only way to defeat him is to, um, yeah, use the gust jar to make his foot so small he loses balance and falls over. And... Okay, we'll cut out that bit. It's time to get serious, but of course he moves very close towards you, so you have to be very, very careful and keep moving. And, yeah, he'll try and crush you with his big, big head. There we go. Oh, crap, wrong button. Done it! Yeah, you only have a small window of opportunity, so please don't do what I do and confuse buttons. Okay. The best strategy you can use here is suck it, then run. Oh boy, he's coming this way. Uh, run, 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 run. Oh, will you just fall over already? Ow! Not on me, you freaking idiot! Oh, good. Is he still not dead yet? Oh, now he's jumping. Great. This is going to make things so much more fair. Ah! Oh jeez. Will you make up your mind whether you're jumping or walking already? There we go. Just need to wait for it. Wait for it. Wait. Ow! You're gonna pay for that. Oh yes. Uh, the death of a choo choo will never be that satisfying again. And here we go, folks. We've now collected the shiny MacGuffin. I mean, element of earth. Yeah, that's it. Oh, earth element. I'm sorry. Um, is it the source of all different things? I'm pretty sure it for fish, for example, the water is the source of their life. But oh well, and. Yep, we'll take the green portal and I'll see you later.